All right, welcome everybody. I uh, Let me go ahead and clear out a few things here. Welcome to a, another live stream with me. I really appreciate you joining me on a Sunday afternoon. Let me, uh, let me pop over here real quickly and just make sure, yep, looks like I've got some audio levels going here. We've got some viewers. We've already had some chat in the chat room, which is great. So let's see who we have so far. Mono audio, uh, it may be Matthew, it may be mono audio. Does it sound a little... Uh, I've actually changed. I have this um, new setup. I'm not sure if, I think I would have to hook up. It's this new wireless lav mics, which I'm really enjoying. I used them on the live stream with Bill and Ben. Rechargeable, they're uh, Holly Lark or Lark or something like that. I can't remember what they're called, uh, but I'm using one here. It is a change from, let me show you what the difference was. Um, voice only out of right channel, that is not good. Let me see if there is something that 
I need to switch because that was not the case when I was broadcasting. Let me see if there is a switch here that I can make. What about now? Let me see. Let me go back to my... Uh, I am not showing stereo on my mixer, though. Uh, I'm only showing a mono channel. Did that help at all, Matthew? Hey, Xander, welcome. We're just we're, we're working on audio. Uh, I've got a new Hollyland uh, um, set up here, and I'm trying to see. Uh, Matthew is telling me it's only coming out of the right ear, which I'm sure would be really annoying. Um, if I need to, I can. This is, uh, let me show you what I had before. This is the microphone I had before up here uh, that I was using for live streams. And uh, it is a Rode caster and I'm checking, yep, still got uh, good the sound up here. So that's that one. Um, yeah, mon still mono audio. Uh, let me see, I think I need to clear that out. Let me go ahead and clear that. Uh, there, that mic works. Okay, so that one is not the one I really wanna use. That is the uh, Rode up here. Uh, I really was looking forward to using the new lav mic, which is right here. But if it's only coming out of the right channel, um, that's not good, Matthew. Um, I think, you know what, let me, let, me, let me see if, I don't know how I would have tested this in advance. Let me just check in my ATEM Mini here and see if there is a setting where I can make sure that this is in mono. Now, see, I'm distracted. Uh, let me see what I can do here. Uh, da, 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 da. That is my equalizer. So the equalizer does not show stereo. Let me try this right here. Um, let's see if there is a, yeah, output. Is, oh, yeah, I know I see it. Okay, I, I do see where I am only getting a single channel to the right. I am seeing that now, Matthew. Let me check here. What did I do with my, da, 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 da. I'm sure there is a setting on this thing that will let me change it to manual. Let me pull off the, here a second here. Uh, that is the out. Um, hmm. Test, test, test. Testing, oh, that is weird. I am not gonna like that. I'm sure that is just really annoying for you. So, in the interest of not driving you nuts, let me see, how many of you are still hanging? I didn't mean to, yeah, I know, Matthew, it's easy to derail me, no problem. I think what I am going to do until I can figure this out is, if you guys are okay with this mic, which I understand is not uh, giving, yeah, as a matter of fact, I can see it here. I am getting, let me check here. Yeah, I'm getting stereo here. So I will work on the output for the uh, wireless here a little bit later. Let me go ahead and get this off. We'll go ahead and use this right here. And I will go ahead and turn this off and plug this back in. So thanks for helping me check ch test that out. And let me get rid of this out of the system so that we don't accidentally switch back to it. And all right, now we can get back to business, Matthew. So thank you for that. Uh, but I can also probably, let me see if I can get us just a little bit more gain on this mic right here. That should be a little bit better, right? Let me pull it down just a tad. Okay, that right there uh, may be too hot for you. So let me pull it down a little bit. Okay, all right, now where I think we're finally there. We will, oh goodness, I'm sure we scared some folks off trying to work through that. All right, so what we're gonna do today is, uh, first of all, let me get caught up a little bit. If you didn't get a chance to watch the uh, live stream with Bill Hurd and Ben Jordan, what a great time that was. There's a link in the video description below so that you can uh, go watch that. It was a fun conversation about Commodore computers, Mega 65, and we got, even got into some computer-aided design with Ben. So that was a lot of fun. So uh, if you get a chance to do that, make sure you do that and leave a comment. Let us know that you watch that. That would be great. Uh, before we get started, a couple of things. I, I am. Uh, we are going to be looking at a specific device today. Uh, which is the focus for this live stream. And let me show you what we're gonna be looking at here. We are going to be looking at this device right here. And it is a 
funny little device let me say it is the look look at the name on this thing the emods gaming retro games console gv 300 s mini tv style 308 video games play i'm not going to read the rest of it it's just out of control with the title but i do have it in turquoise now you'll notice down here uh, there are lots of options for this i do have in case you're interested uh, because I'm, I'm shocked at this this thing has four and a half star ratings uh, so I'm really interested to see why people love this thing. Uh, but I do have all the links in the video description below so that you can go and you can grab either the uh, turquoise controller or, hey, maybe you want the wood grain, the simulated wood grain, just like your old station wagon back in the day. You can get that copy too, or that version too. I decided to go with the turquoise uh, because I just love the turquoise retro color. And uh, this thing has some pretty cool features if you take a look at the page. It is listed for $31. I did buy this during Amazon Prime Day, so got a pretty significant discount on it. Uh, and I just, it was an impulse buy, and I decided to just drop it into the uh, cart. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. And I have it actually right here. Check that out. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the, the quirks with that here in just a minute. So uh, I think that's going to be a blast. We might, if we get time, uh, whoops, I'm late plumbing woes. So ja Jamie is plumbing right now. So and yeah, that's what happens. Uh, I, and I've told you I don't plumb. Of all the things I get into, plumbing is never going to be one of them. So uh, not going to happen. But before we break into this thing right here, I do want to share, I found this at the Barnes & Noble. Have you guys seen this? The, ult the Retro Gamer Ultimate Retro Hardware Guide. Uh, this thing is pretty sweet. Um, it goes through, if you've not seen it, it's a, uh, I believe it's, I think it's a British publication. If I'm not, yeah, it's Future. Uh, so it's printed in the UK. So for all my UK watchers out there, you guys just have the best retro computer magazine. You just have the best magazine selections, period. I really appreciate what you all do. But uh, this is great because it's got some basic information about a lot of retro computers and gaming systems. I'm already learning a lot, a lot of things I didn't know. And trust, there, there's a lot of systems I did not touch. So I'm kind of digging into that. Now, again, I, I'm not changing my focus from probably really Commodore heavy stuff and retro games like Atari 2600. But who knows? I might, oh, there's our, there's our favorite right there. Um, there you go, right there. Commodore 64, that's in here as well. Uh, so Ms. Love wants to know what's the, uh, what's, Hello all, what's breaking a few speed limits? <laughs> hey, don't don't be running those red lights, Ms. Love. You don't want to do that. So thank you for showing up. Ms. Love just got off work. Uh, he shared in chat just a little bit earlier. So you know what? I know what you all are here for. You all are here for this. So we are going to go ahead and dig into this. Uh, I do want to make sure that we keep this kind of timely. I've already, Matthew has already derailed us with the audio. I will figure that out before next time. I know there's probably just one button I'm missing or pressing that we'll get that out of the left and the right. Uh, there are two of these, but I know two receivers, but I know you're not supposed to use both of them. That would just be goofy. So I'll figure it out. I'll spend some time in the manual and do that. But let's go ahead and take a look at this guy right here, the family pocket, whatever that is, standard accessories. So it's a gaming device that looks like a retro TV. And according to what I saw online, these knobs kind of work, work in here. But what really struck me, and this is why I have this in my, my video thumbnail, what is a bookshelf retro TV? A bookshelf. Now I assume, so uh, gasp, it's not, it's not my fault. No, Matthew, I'm just, it's really my fault because I should have tested it before. But if you have an idea what, how you how in the world you would make this mistake i'm assuming it means bookshelf uh and like many of these uh these gaming devices that come from china probably this one is probably from china would be my guess let's see if it's on here somewhere uh does not oh yeah made in china uh somewhere something got lost in translation a bookshelf <laughs> I know, you're just not cool unless you know what a bookshelf is. Well, we are gonna find out what a bookshelf is today. So that's gonna be fun. Must be a millennial thing, that's hilarious. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. But, but the funny thing is, is they don't make that mistake once. Uh, that's made several times. So whoever was doing the, uh, the translations messed up. So what did we get inside? Well, here's what we have inside. You see, we get the Bookshelf Retro TV. See, I told you it was on there twice. Bookshelf Retro TV. We get a manual. Uh, that'll be interesting to see if Bookshelf is uh, listed in the manual. We get lithium batteries. Oh, no, I almost forgot to. Ah, rats. I'm, I'm going to need batteries. 
I am going to have to walk around because I did learn while reading this that I'm going to need batteries for uh, one of the controllers that's in here. So I will walk over there and have to get that in a minute. But luckily, I have my, uh, my screen up for when I need to take a quick break and do that. It won't take long. It's just right over there. I hope I have two AA batteries. LCD screen notes due to the characteristics of LCD. There are some dots that do not light up. Well, there you go. There's just a way of telling that you may have a shoddy project, product and things may not work. How about that? So that is the box. Here's the top again, Bookshelf Retro TV. We're good to go right there. All right, let's open this thing up and see what we have inside the Bookshelf Retro TV. I'm gonna keep saying Bookshelf because that's, that's the official name, folks, right there. All right, so we open it up. I wonder what that blue dot means. Any ideas about the blue dots? Put that in chat. I'd love to know what the blue, oh, color. I know what that is, obviously. That's the color because if it were wood grain, I would assume that that would be brown, right? Okay, so I figured that out. Uh, all right, well, enough of that. All right, hey, check this out. So this is what's inside. This is our little uh, faux rabbit ears. They do not pull out. Now that would have been cool with a little extra, uh, it would have cost a little bit more money, but that would have been cool if they pulled out. Now, unfortunately, it looks like, look at this. I've already got scratches on my bookshelf retro TV. Look at this. Looks like this was sitting here, and during shipping, this thing just moved around on it and scratched it up. I'll have to see if I can maybe, let me go ahead and uh, change. There we go. There you go. Now you can see a little bit better right there. So let me pull that up right there. So see that, those markings? That's not good. All right, let me go ahead and lighten this back up a little bit for you. Oop, wrong way, Steven. There we go, and we'll refocus. Perfect. All right, so let's see what we have in here. Here's the retro TV. Isn't it cute? Look at this little guy. Now, there's already fingerprints on here. That bothers me. That makes me wonder if this thing has not already been opened. That cannot be good. Or I guess when somebody packed it, they could have put fingerprints on it. But look, there's not even a, a cover on this. I'm wondering now, did I get... Look at that. I'm wondering if I possibly got a model that was sent back. Oh, this, this, uh, ooh, that's not good. Look at all these, hey, we can uh, maybe look those fingerprints up online and find out who touched this. Hmm. But that does not bode well. That, because there's, again, there's no cover on it. That just to me looks like maybe this was a returned unit. And I will say there wasn't any kind of tape on here either. So let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that this is, this is going to work. All right, so that is the TV itself. Let's see what we have on here. Uh, we've got the screen. This is a three inch screen. We do have some buttons here. We have a link light. There's an LED there. We have a power light there. Now the, this actually turns and is a volume control from what I understand. <coughs> Excuse me. And this does, oh, this turn, well, it kind of turns. Well, not really. So it doesn't appear to do anything, that right there. Here on the side, we have, let's see, we have a micro USB for charging. This does have a lithium ion battery inside, so you can, uh, you don't have to have this plugged in to use it. Uh, right here, we have a reset, and then here we have an AV out cable. So I am going to see if I can plug this into the ATEM or uh, Mini over here, and we'll be able to display the screen for you all without having to look at this screen. We'll give that a shot, but we'll also take a look at this and see what happens here. On the back, what do we have? We have, now see, there's a screw missing right there. So again, I, I'm a little concerned right here that something has somebody has used this or maybe they didn't put screws in oh look here's the batteries so these are the rechargeable lithium ion batteries that are inside amazon basics now see that right there tells me there is no way that this originally came with amazon basic uh batteries and these are alkaline uh it's supposed to be a rechargeable battery on the inside i think i have a dud uh, this will probably be the shortest live stream ever because I don't think this thing's going to work when we turn it on because if I plug this in to the charger, those are supposed to be lithium ion batteries. Those are not supposed to be, I think, let's see, uh, da, 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 let's see what, what do we have here? This bat now, see now here it has another battery component. Let's see what we have here. And look, I'm missing a battery. However, I'm not missing a battery because there are no posts here. Look at that. It's using this single battery. Now this is the rechargeable. I What is going on here? Maybe we'll have to check. Is this just a, these are just batteries that are in here for storage. 
So I have to wonder now, I'm curious, are those the batteries that I need for the wireless controller? Interesting, this just gets interesting and more interesting as we dig into it, doesn't it? Okay, well, we're gonna put this back on. Again, no screws. Now I will admittedly, generally I would take these screws out and I wouldn't use them and just remove them. So, so there's the basic unit. Hmm. I am not going to turn it on yet. Uh, let's see what else we have in the box here. And we'll set that here. Let's set that here so you can take a look at that. Uh, also in the box is the controller here. It's got that uh, Nintendo style controller. Uh, not one of my favorite controllers in the world, but boy, that does look sweet together, doesn't it? That's pretty, pretty nice. What do you guys think about that? Um, Oh, I just turned it on. See that flashing right there? So uh, that means there are batteries inside. It said batteries not included. Now, again, maybe I got one that somebody, oh, yeah, there's, look at that. There are Amazon alkalines inside. Uh, again, uh, the instruct, the uh, online, it says batteries not included. Uh, so interesting that I've got Amazon Basics. Maybe I'd, phew, I'm confused now. Maybe, who knows? Who knows what's going on here? Interesting. Okay, so what else do we have in the box? Boy, that does look good. Oh, here's our little antenna. We'll put that on here in a minute. Also in the box over here, we do have this cable here, which is our AV cable. Uh, it is a standard uh, RCA connector with this little mini headphone port. Not headphone, but just a, what is that? An eighth, sixteenth? What is that? That is super tiny, so... Uh, that plug there. Uh, we will, again, we'll try and plug this into the ATEM Mini. I can do that. I'll run it through the uh, Cloner Alliance box and then we'll go in and we'll be able to see it. But this allows you to hook it up to a large screen if your large screen has these plugs anymore. Not many of them do anymore. That's for sure. So that's also what you get in there. We do get some instructions. It looks like that, that's here. So it's a 2.4. Oh, I didn't uh, mention this is wireless. This does not have to wire into the USB. So this is wireless. Uh, wireless joystick, which was another thing that was kind of appealing to me. And I'm sure this is showing us here is, these are the instructions in Chinese. Let's hope on the back is some English. There we go. Uh, let's see, family pocket 2.4. I don't see bookshelf on here, guys. Uh, 3.5 millimeters. Thank you, Ms. Lop. That's exactly what that connector is right there. Appreciate it. You guys in the chat room, keep me honest for sure. All right, so there is that piece right there. Here's another set here. This looks like a uh, quick, more of a quick start, I would guess. Oh, here we go. The bookshelf. So now we're gonna change it up and say bookshelf retro TV here. So we go from the bookshelf to the bookshelf. We finally get it right here. So somebody took the time to get this right. So these are just uh, instructions in English. What is the difference between those and these? Let's see. So you get two manuals. You get this one right here, and then you get this one. That's kind of weird. Uh, Matthew says it might be a two and a half millimeter. That's that's possible too. I, I, it's tiny, uh, and I'm sure we could check online and see what that is. So if you have any any ideas why we get two manuals, that's quite interesting. I'm going to stick with this one because that's the the one in English. Of course, this one has English too, but this one is entirely English. And then the last thing we have is our micro USB to charge the lithium ion. Hey, Neil, good to have you. Uh, <laughs> high class. Oh, I love this. Neil says, uh, high class. Sorry, I'm late. Missed the bus. Uh, that's all right, because uh, Mislav was tardy. So we've got tardy, uh, tardy Mislav, and I, I guess Neil's just, uh, you're tardy too, because you missed the bus. So uh, let's go ahead and clear that out. So happy to have all of you here though. Uh, so thanks for joining. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the chat, so I'm, I'm doing that too. All right, so that is our charging. So I know, let's go ahead and uh, take the box. Let's set that aside. And let's see if we can turn this thing on first under the camera so that you can see what happens. Now, I just feel like I really need to put this on right here. It looks like that goes right here. So we get the rabbit ears antennas. How many of you put tin foil on your rabbit ears growing up? I know I did. Uh, I was always trying to pull in faraway stations late at night from big cities in the small town. Look at that. Is it me or does that look like the Avengers logo? I'm not sure where why that speaks, but that is pretty cute, isn't it? 
Uh, Matthew wants to know if I'm going to get out the ruler. Uh, that would really get weird. Yes, that would get weird really quick. Uh, you know what? I do have a ruler, <laughs> but I'm not going to pull it out just because you said that. So thanks, Matthew. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure your dog eats your homework. So that's good. All right. So very funny, guys. Really enjoy the chat today. You guys are you guys are a little, you guys are ramped up today. So that's awesome. We should get some really good chat on this. All right. So let's see what we can do here let's see if we can fire this thing up first without connecting it to anything uh if we do get time if we if we get time uh and we might see if we can make some time for it i i did break out the life goo folks uh we might actually open this thing up right here and see what makes this thing tick it just depends on how much time we have and how we're doing but uh, I, I would like to try that if at all possible so i do have the precision screwdriver ready to go if we need to do that all right, so now let me go ahead and put this here and uh, let me turn this the right way. Now, according to the manual right here, looks like, uh, thanks, let's see, included in the patch, basic operation, please select two AAA batteries and correctly place the power supply. AAA? AAA batteries, Is this, are these AAAs? Oh yeah, there they are. They are AAAs, okay. So, so now I'm really curious, what in the world are these four? I mean, there's there's connectors down there. This is just the weirdest thing. So it looks like it goes uh, interesting. So we go. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like there's positive, negative, positive. So this thing will run on a couple of different battery types. This is so odd because it does not mention this battery port here anywhere in here. Let's see. It does not. Uh, so that is, I'll, I'll spend some more time, but I'm not seeing anything in here that shows how to put those in there. So I'm going to assume that is odd. It obviously runs on black magic. It's mind boggling how cheap they are able to make and sell stuff. I know. Um, uh, th th that is just weird. So I'm going to, I assume I put these guys back in here. I don't know which way to put them because it doesn't even say which way to put them. Uh, if I look at that, now there are, it looks like that's a negative. See that little line? Can we assume that that's the negative? That didn't make a whole lot of sense. I guess I shouldn't have taken them out without looking at the orientation, but we can try it anyway and see what's going on. Uh, the battery can insert the battery, make sure the battery's polarity are inserted correctly. Well, I'll just have to assume that that's what we just did. Okay. Very odd. Uh, yes, it works on mystery power. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing turned on and see what's going on. So, uh, we need to, this is the weirdest thing ever. How do we turn this thing on? I think, oh, there's a little on off thing here. Oh, what's that? Yeah, this is why I'm this is why I'm really uh, concerned, folks, because it is on. It was on out of the box, and no light, no power light. So what we're going to do is we are going to plug it in and see if maybe it's just running off that lithium-ion battery and there's no charge. Uh, again, I'm really worried and suspect that I have a bum unit that was shipped to me, and. Uh, can it run Doom? We're going to find out if it'll run Doom. Right now, it is it is doomed to not work at this point. Okay, so I'm going to plug this into power I have over here. Make sure it's turned off. It is. I do like the switch. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, let's... Uh, all right, we're plugged. Oh, there we go. We got power. Power right there. Okay, so now if we turn it on... Okay, uh, that looks good. Now let's turn it on, see what happens. Oh, there we go. All right, so something weird, maybe this battery isn't fully charged. We'll let that go. Uh, I still need to figure out what in the world's going on back here. Why, you know what, let's check something. Look at that. Okay, somebody explain this to me. What in the world are these batteries for? If it's, if it, can run off of this, and I'm assuming that recharges this. Why in the world does it need this? 
the mystery never stops oh my gosh this is so weird um so so matthew i know you say uh y'all i was thinking those were just a spare battery compartment because they're right you're right there isn't a metal strip on the lid however there is look at this there are metal connect see them right there it's actually connecting the battery to the motherboard or the board look at that what in the world I've never, I've never been so confused by a battery-powered device. Oh, look, you can turn the volume up and down. Now, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Okay, let's go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll figure out the battery stuff. Maybe when we open it up, we can figure out what's going on. At least it's working. Uh, hopefully, that's a good screen for you. Uh, now, here's our controller. Let's see. This should automatically connect. And it does. Check that out. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And you don't really need to see the controller for right now. But let's see what we have on here. And then we'll see if we can get it hooked up to the ATEM so that you can see the output on a large screen. Okay, so here we go. Let's just check. You know, I always go into what's a shotting? What are shotting games? Somebody please help me. What are shotting games? <laughs> Matthew saw it at the same time I did. Shotting? Whew, that's kind of weird. Okay, so I'm going to hit A. I'm not going to hit A. I'm going to hit B. There we go. And here are some of the games that are in here. Uh, and let's just, oh, there's there's some standard stuff in here. You know, I've done a lot of videos on these handhelds, and uh, it's probably going to be the same types of games we've seen there. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. We're cooking with gas. This right here made it worth, look at this. Isn't that cute? Look at that. We can play Galaga on this tiny three inch screen. That already might be worth, let's see, how do we get in there? Uh, start, there we go. Oh, look, and it's got the uh, levels over here on the side. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there we go. Let me, uh, let me bring this down here. And I think I can make it easier for you to see. Let me zoom back in. And let me bring my, yeah, meanwhile, I'm losing, I know. Uh, let me bring this down here. Uh, let's bring our exposure up just a little bit. There we go. Now I'm watching this on the uh, a, a separate monitor. I should be watching it down here. All right, so let's see. I assume to go back to our main menu, we hit select. Or maybe we hit both of them. Oh, we hit both of them. There we go. So you hit start and select to go back to the main menu. Uh, I'll tell you what, let, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. And again, we can change our volume. I like the manual retro volume control. Isn't that cool? Time to drink. <laughs> Shotting, yeah, boom, yeah, you're right. Okay, so we know it works when we plug it in. I'll assume that the battery is charging. Uh, we can test it, I guess. Surely we've got enough charge to keep this thing running if, it, if in fact this is actually charging this down here. Let's unplug it and see what happens, guys. Here we go, we're gonna unplug it, here we go. Hang on, cross those fingers. There you go, so it's just the battery wasn't charged. So again, no idea what these batteries are for unless it extends the life somehow to let you play longer. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. All right, and so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna see if I can plug it into the uh, ATEM here. The, the good thing is I didn't need additional batteries, which is cool, but I don't, I, what do you guys think about this? Uh, I, I, I Admittedly, the form factor, I just love this little TV. I could see this sitting in an office. Uh, I could possibly see it up here on the shelf. That's kind of cool. Uh, but just that alone was, was pretty sweet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, now we're gonna break open this cable right here and we're gonna see if we can display it on the big screen. And we're gonna see what kinds of games we actually have on this thing. So this is the point where you all can ask questions uh, while I get this thing connected. It shouldn't take me but a second. Should be pretty easy. And I've got a, a super source screen set up for us. So we should be in pretty good shape. So what I'm gonna do is, here's that right there. We're gonna plug that in right there whatever size plug that is, right? We're gonna plug that in there. Well, that was kind of hinky. Oh, hopefully that's gonna work. All right, we'll set that down to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is take the audio. So going back to mono audio, there we go. This is gonna be audio mono right there and video. So I've got a couple of plugs in down here that I plug those into my capture device. 
And what I'm going to do now is we are going to go to my capture device. We're going to turn it on and see if we have video. There you go, guys. How about that? Now, the great thing about my capture device is uh, I could... Now, I'm wondering, do you have sound? Let me see. Uh, number... What number? This is two. Probably are hearing that from the screen too. Let me uh, let me turn that down a little bit. That may be way too much. Yeah, that seems really loud. So let me bring that down. Okay, give me a sound check. Let me know what you think. That should be pretty good right there. Maybe up just a little bit. Uh, all right. Uh, you are stereo and it is mono out of the right top of you. So this is, so it is coming out mono. So I could get a splitter and split that in. I, you know, there's gotta be a way in the A10 Mini to take uh, a source in and make it mono. I will research that before the next live stream so that we get that right. But that's kind of cool if my voice is mono and it's up here somewhere and who, who knows. Just pretend it's surround sound. I'm, I'm broadcasting in Dolby Atmos today. How about that? Not really. Okay, so now we have this. All right, let's, let's, uh, here, I have a super source for us. Let's see if it's working. Hey, how about that? Let me see, uh, that super source cuts a few things off, but at least you can see the controller here. Uh, there we go. And uh, I might be able to, let me see if I can fix that. Let me, if I take this and stretch it, what happens? Yeah, that's worse, so we won't do that. Okay, I did not count on it having that really weird, but uh, at least this gives you kind of a, a, a multi-view here for a second. Let's see what games we have on here. I do like the little uh, the little spinny uh, indicator. That's pretty cool. Puzzle, the thing got anything uh, like Adventure of Lalo. We're gonna find out. So let's go to, first of all, Adventure Games. Let's see what we have. Chip and Dale. So if you if you you can go up and down, but if you use the left and right, it'll page over. So this will let us see what we have. So we have uh, Mad Christmas, Tiny Toon. Um, gosh, got a bunch of stuff I've never even heard of. Mario Runner. Uh, what's our pleasure? Let's try. Let's see. So let's oh Spider Man. There we go. Uh, a Warp Man. Let's try Warp Man. I have no earthly idea what that is, but let's see if we can see enough of it on here that we can play it. Oh, it gets getting cut off a little bit, but that's all right. Let me go ahead. Uh, we don't want to cut it off. So let's do this right here and we'll do this. And there, oh, that looks interesting. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see, press start, play. There we go. So this is Warp Man. No idea what we do other than die. How about that? If you are familiar with Warp, Warp Man, let me know because I don't seem to know what I'm doing. I'm going to assume that I just shoot these guys, right? There we go. Well, that's, gee, that's just going to be all kinds of fun. Uh, all right, enough of that. <laughs> Let's go back. And so those were the adventure games. So again, we've got that page. We've got this page here. Let me get rid of this uh, banner down below. I feel just like I'm not in sync today with all this stuff. I think I got frazzled, Matthew, when all the, the mono didn't work the way I was expecting it. Not your fault, I'm just saying, you know, whenever you have a little glitch, that's what happens. Mouse Hero, Tiny Toon, Mario Brothers, uh, Circus Mario, Garden War, so what's Mario Runner? Anybody know what Mario Runner is? Uh, Xander saying it seems to be ROMs from arcade games, which you can play in MAME. Yeah, I would go with that. A lot of these Chinese handhelds have basically the same games. I can't tell you how many different games that have Galaga and Mario Brothers. I still also wonder how they get by selling this with, uh, you know, the, the because some, some of these titles still have ownership, especially with Nintendo. I'm surprised that they don't go after them. Um, yeah, or bootleg NES titles. Yeah, a lot of them are that as well too, Jamie. Uh, the internet says Warp Man is an updated Namco game from their previous previous game and game Warp and Warp. I can't even talk today. Okay, thank you, Matthew, for that. We'll look that one up. So this is uh, a version of Mario. Let's go ahead and start that. Oh, look at that! It is 
Oh, see now, there's a, there's a language issue right there. I don't think that's gonna work for me. <laughs> I have no early idea what it said. Although I'm assuming we can press the buttons and get started. Uh, here's our controller, here's our, oh. That's interesting, and now I can't jump. So, oh, there we go. There's no jump. It's just, uh, it's like the Dig Dug thing. I can't get up there. That's interesting. Oh, and I just died. So there you go. Well, enough of that. All right, let's go to fighting games. Let's see what we have on this little guy. Uh, the fighting games we have are some standard stuff. Street Fighter, Double Dragon, uh, River City Brawl, Kung Fu. We'll come back to Kung Fu. Ch uh, Super Chinese. We have Wrestle, Urban Champion. Oh, by the way, there are 308 games is what it says. I do like that they're uh, categorized because some of these little handheld devices, it's just one big long scroll. So at least they do have some kind of... Now, this is... Now, see, my controller just stopped working. So the wireless connection just broke. So let me see. There's supposedly something I can do. Let's reset it here and see if that gets us back. It is no longer working, folks. The wireless controller has ceased to function. Oh, what was that? Uh, I may know why. I may know why it stopped working. Ready? We were playing on battery power. Let's go ahead and get power. And I bet the radio turned off on this to try and preserve power for this and then it cut that off let's see if let's see if i am correct all right let's go back to here let's see if we are working again yep that's what it was so it uh it was the the main unit had power but the radio it turned that off for the controller so that it could continue so there you go well at least we know that so let's go back to our fighting games here Let's go ahead. Uh, Mario meets Load Runner. Yeah, that's probably right. Uh, you're probably exactly right. If we go over here, here's some of the games that we have here. Sea Wolf. Did I? Uh, I'm sorry. Did I get the right one? Fighting. There we go. All right. So we were going to look at fighting games. So Kung Fu, Wrestle, Doughboy. What in the world? Making love. What? This is. Hey, this is a family channel, folks. I'm not sure we're going to be looking at that game. That's interesting if that actually, this is actually marketed for children too in the uh, Amazon listing. So they might want to rethink that right there. Soldier, a balloon fight, B Battle City, Bomberman, uh, Mars, Panzer, ooh, Panzer Attack. That sounds good. Millipede, some standard stuff there. Popeyes, good stuff there. So uh, let's try just one title out of this section. Let's try, I know which one you all want and it's not, <laughs> it's under fighting. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, yes, it is under the fighting section. Do, do I, I, you have to try me? I know, Neil, I know. Okay, you. <sighs> All right, let's do it. Let's see what it really is. Oh my goodness, it's actually. Oh my, is that a tank? Is that what you all are seeing? A title called Making Love with a Tank? What, and what is it? What in the world? This is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. Here's stage one. Let's see what stage one is. Let's hope this does not go in a horrible way. Oh, I can pick the stage. So we'll start at stage one. Oh, it looks like I can move through all the stages. <laughs> all the stages of, uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, let me get back to stage one. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of stages. I guess I have to go back. There we go. Okay, start. Yeah, so I don't know how this thing got its title, but this just does not seem like uh, what it is. Okay, oh, we can't do that. Can't do that. Looks like, uh, let's see if we can get our way through here. There we go, got one. So that is the game called Making Love. I know, Mizlov, Make Love Not War. What in the world? This is the strangest thing. So there we go, there we go. We've just, I, again, I was scared to do it. And I have to wonder why in the world was that listed there? What else are we gonna find? What are we gonna find in sports? Huh, interesting. 
Well, of course, hot blood soccer. Of course, hot blood basketball, hot blood ice hockey. Whew. Wow, those are some titles right there. Uh, okay, let's see what else we have. We have family tennis. We have uh, 100 meter dash. <laughs> Check this one out. The 100, did you know that that was an Olympic event? Uh, Summer Olympics, the 100 meter dash. How about that one? Uh, we have shot put, we have hyper Olympic. Uh, hyper sports, uh, badminton, badminton, gotta love badminton, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, we have the breaststroke, which be, I'm, I hope that that's a, uh, a swimming game, and uh, that's what we have there. We have a discus put, because we want to put our discus. We have a query motor, query motor, and then we have a base ball. So, uh, uh, what, what's, what, what's your... What what's your privilege, guy? What do you what do you what, what do you, what would you like to see? What is your selection under this category? Anything you'd like to see? Indiana Jones, ha, sports. Indiana, there we go. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones for sports. Absolutely does not belong in the sports section. Whew, wow, this is this is something else right here. Uh, but this looks like a, just a regular port of Indiana Jones. So, although I wish I could get it to work. There we go. This is actually not a very good port either. Look at this. I'm not sure what we do. Uh, I will say this. I'm glad I was able to get this thing working on the uh, ATM Mini though, because I think it makes it a lot easier for you all to see. I'm going to have to fix another profile though for the, can he jump? Well, that's an interesting jump. Uh, those I know those colors are very weird. Okay, we're out of here. That's hurting my eyeballs folks All right, so we've done adventure. We've done fighting. We've done sports now the next great category we have is shotting We're gonna look at shotting games right now. Let's go ahead and uh, hit shotting And I've got my stripe along the bottom again. Where is my controller? There we go. Let me get that out of the way Okay, good. It's gone. All right, so we have so, uh, so for the shotting games uh, wow, we have Summer Carnival, I assume that's Ether Mission, Fantasy Zone, this is a popular one right here, 1942, we might take a look at that. There's Galaga, Galaga Plus, Galaxian, so that's a good selection there. Uh, Star, Starfighter, Stargate, Sky Destroyer, Sky Invader, we have something called Galg, just Galg. It's uh, Galg without the uh, Galaga, I guess, I don't know what that is. We have Tank A1990, we have Gal Galagant, Space Invaders, Grade, graders, <laughs> graders, oh my goodness, graders. This is this is something else. Let me, uh, I just wanna check in. Whew. We also have uh, Zevia, uh, that's common. Uh, Levine Action, Macro Maycross, uh, Formation Z, Twin B, First Defender, X, X, Xurion, and Sky Kid. What's your pleasure, folks? Pick a game, any game, I'll throw her up there is, uh, I, that's what I think, Matthew. I think that one probably is. Uh, Matthew asked the question is, Gray Deers, possibly Gradius, and I think it probably is, so let's check it out. Since you uh, pop that one up there, let's see if we can find that one. And these are not alphabetical either, which makes it really hard. All the tar arcade games, all the ones you know and love, Neil, for sure. All right, here we go. Uh, yes, this one, oh, look at that. That's even messed up. 1986, but I think that is, yeah, that's Gradius, right? No, this is something, di no, this is not Gradius. This is something different. This is something horrible. What is this? Oh, see, I just died. Actually, you know, it's not horrible. It's, it actually looks pretty good. Um, oh, gosh. Somebody want, there we go. Somebody want to check this out for us and see uh, maybe online what this is. Uh, the controls, you know, these controls are not bad. This con little controller just is a Nintendo controller. I will say that. So uh, let's see. Let's go back. Uh, anybody have one more they want to see in the shotting category before we break this thing open? We'll do a couple. We'll do the other two categories and then we'll break this thing open and see if we can figure out what that battery is. We're, we're already 45 minutes in. Let's go ahead and move through here pretty quickly. Uh, let's see. Um, Vic Viper. Was Vic Viper? Oh, Vic Viper. Uh, second part of Raid Over Moscow. Really? Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's go to our next level. Let's get our shotting here, our next category. Let's look at our racing games quickly. 
Uh, some of these, Zippy Ray, Seething. Seething is a racing game? That's interesting. Uh, Super Sprint, Vindicators should not be a racing game, I don't think. Deformable, Metromania, Metromania? <laughs> Road Fighter, F1, Excite Bite, Road Worker, uh, Route 16, Challenger, UFO Race, Lightning, Mock Rider, Good Hand, uh, Road Blast, Firebird, these are just hilarious. Here's that seething again. Didn't we just see that? Didn't we just seething that earlier? Oh, that's because I went around to the beginning. Okay, so we did seething that twice. Okay, so let's try, uh, let's do one racing game. Let's see if we can find something. Uh, F1, there we go. Oh, uh, this is gonna be horrible. This is gonna be horrible, folks. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is a pole position type game right here. Hold down the uh, button for your accelerator. And we are booking. It is not super fast by any stretch of the imagination though. And I am, th that this is 200 kilometers per hour. This does not seem like I'm going that fast. Oh, there's a car. All right, well, enough of that. And our last category is puzzle. Let's go ahead and hit that. Did the music change? It sounds like the music changed. Interesting. Okay, so we have Bubble Bobble, we have Snow Bros, uh, Arkanoid, that's a, a common one, uh, Balloon Shot, Baltron, Dada. That's new for me. Now this says 143 in one but online it says 308 in one. So who's right? Is it 143 or is it 100 or 308? I don't think we've seen a 308 games. So Toy Story Blinks, Dejectile, <laughs> Destroy Dragon Dunk. It's better than Pole Position on the Vic. Yeah, it is, Neil, you're right. That game was better. Uh, Hammer and Nail, Happy Match, Ice Ocean, I Go Meekin, oh my gosh, or Mikan. I Go Ego Shanan, Island Tetris, Ladangel, 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 Lattice Winner, Cute Fish. Uh, how about this one? Lot Lot. That's a lot lot of game right there. Uh, the Christmas Quest. Uh, wow. Mag Max. Mag Max. Do you think that's supposed to be Mad Max? Mag Max. Interesting. Uh, Meccano. Wow. This is uh, Othello, Pac Man, Pong Pong. Uh, so start. Queuing up your pleasure. What do you want to? What do you want to see here? We have river jump, pulveration. How about that one? Sea cross slalom. Hey, well, there's Sudoku. If we need to play Sudoku. Uh, Spelunker, Spiver Spy. Oh, there we go. Ski and Teletubbies. Uh, Star Luster, Submarine War Zone, Wild Wonderwall, Wrecking Crew. There's a bunch of stuff in the puzzle section. Look at this. It just goes on and on. So. Wait a minute, is that top part 143 and one? Is that the number in this category? I think it is. Uh, here's Galaxy Patrol. I think that, yeah, the 143 that you are seeing right there in one is just for the category. So I guess you add all the categories up and you get 308. Yep, there you go. So I did not spy versus spy, of course. Yes, we will do that. So, uh, but before we do that, I wanna try pinball. Standard pinball game here. Oh, except one side does not work. One side is not working. <laughs> I can only have, oh, the, oh, that's weird. The control is, get ready for this. The control is, this is a flipper and this is a flipper. So I guess I just wanted to have one on the right and one on the left. That's interesting. Let's see if we can do that again. There we go. All right. So even, it even says Nintendo on there. Look at that. So we're stealing uh, Nintendo's even brand with this game. Okay, so you wanna see uh, Spy vs. Spy, so let me do that. Let me just verify something here. Yeah, so see that says 23 and one. So that lets us know that there are 23 games in the racing category. That's actually kind of handy. All right, we want Spy vs. Spy. Let's see if we can find that here. 
And they, again, they are not alphabetical, which is really a pain. Looks uh, freakishly like Pinball Dreams on Amiga. It does look a little bit like that, doesn't it? Oh, here we go, Spy vs. Spy. Let's see if this is, oh, this is a, this looks like a pretty good version, good color, 1990. Uh, we'll do training. Level one. And you know what? I I really don't remember how to play this game, but it looks like a good version of the game. I will say that. I'm supposed to go out and find them, right? I'm the top one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I do not remember how to play this, but I will say it does look like a pretty faithful version of the game. So, uh, all right. So, well, there you go. There is the, let me go back to our screen here. So there is uh, the 308 Retro TV Bookshelt uh, handheld gaming system. Uh, what do you say we try and take this thing apart, see what makes this thing tick, uh, and then uh, we'll go from there and see where we are. So I'm going to go ahead and move back to here. Uh, let me get caught up on chat here and see if there's anything that we've missed over here. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about these little knockoff things that come out of the East. Are they basically NES emulators or is it a main thing? I think it's a, uh, well, we'll break it open. They, they have these common processors and I've listed all the processors I found in these, you know, in a blog post and in a Google sheet. So I will add this. I'll try to remember to put that, uh, uh, that Google sheet in the video description below so that you have access to it, as well as a link to uh, some of the handheld stuff, all the videos I've done on these weird little handhelds. I will say, this one though, uh, let me go and turn this one off. There we go. This one has some real pluses and minuses to it. I mean, I really, uh, admittedly, I dig this form factor. I just think that's so cool, especially with the little switch there and the volume control. I really like the wireless controller. Uh, I'm confused as all get out by the power source on this thing. Uh, I'm obviously charging the little battery in here but again, what do these do? I guess I can take a battery tester on these to make sure these are, at least these batteries are good. I should test that. I can do that later. But uh, it does just look good, don't you think? And again, you can get this in a wood grain if you want. So uh, let me know what you think about the thing uh, from what you've seen so far. 30 bucks. And again, I did not pay $30. I think on Amazon Prime Day, I got 20 and some change, something like that. So I think for that, hey, that was that was worth the fun of a live stream right there, right? So just having some fun with that was uh, was good. Uh, so it was worth that. But um, yeah, let's let's you guys want to take the, let's take this thing apart and see what's inside, shall we? Uh, so I am going to move us back down here and let's see what makes this little thing tick. All right, uh, I'm going to move me down to here. There we go. And we're going to break out the Life Goo Precision Screwdriver. By the way, if you're interested in this, I have a video about this thing. Uh, this was sent to me for free uh, by Life Goo. They saw my, Ms. Love, they saw my iFu uh, video and they wanted me to feature theirs. And I will say this is, uh, this is superior to the iFu for sure. The Life Goo is great. I love this little guy. So let me go ahead and find the bit that we need here for this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this longer one so I can get in and around here. See, this is another reason why I like the Life Goo because it has these extra long tips. So let's see if we can break this thing. Now, we may break this thing open and never uh, never get it to work again. Let me see if I should take this battery out here. I don't know if I can take this battery out. There we go. So this is, here's the rechargeable that's inside. Again, it's, so we're, we're running this whole thing off. Isn't this only one and a half volts? Let's see. I don't know. I guess this could be more based on, I just can't tell what it is, right? So I don't know if we can figure that out, but uh, we'll go ahead and take that out for now. Put this over the side. We'll go ahead and take off our antenna without breaking it. It is tight in there. I, I put it in there way too hard. The good thing about it is we don't have to worry about even though it looks like a CRT, we do not have to worry about the CRT power, uh, the big uh, supply of power holding. Oh, there we go, finally got it. Let me uh, let me just check, uh, we got a few of you still hanging out in there with me. So if you uh, are hanging out and uh, wanna see this thing, we'll go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and get this thing undone. So I'll get it started by doing it normally and then I'll 
pull it out and I need to let's go ahead and do this one next. I have to admit, this thing is pretty nice. This little screwdriver really makes short work of this. Don't be jealous, Mislov. Hang in there, my friend. I have a special surprise coming around Christmas. That's all I'm going to say right now. He's probably not listening, so maybe he didn't hear that. All right, so here we go. I've got the top off. Okay, so there's the wires right there. See that? We're going to, have to be very careful right here because this is the wire to the... Um, well, that's interesting. So these... Somebody just... You can probably hear a dog bark upstairs. Somebody just uh, is at our front door. So you can see right here, this is um, those connectors. So I probably had these batteries in incorrectly. Let's try something. What I'm going to do is, so it says this is negative. So I actually thought, well, that's, I think that's the way I had it, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's the way I actually had it. So let me go ahead and undo this for now. Oh, man, that is tight. I need a small screwdriver. I didn't bring one. Let me get my tools. Hold on. I have a tiny screwdriver right here that should help us get that out. We want to be careful with that. I don't think they want us taking that off. Well, for fear of breaking it, I don't think it just is not sliding out there. It's probably got, you can see it right there, it's probably got a locking clip right there. So, I, yeah, precision pliers would be good right now, but I'm actually afraid the precision pliers might take that. It seems like that should just come out. Of course, I, you know, I could, I could, hand, I could wrangle it out of there, but let's go ahead and... Let me try something here, one more. Yeah, that's just really hung in there, guys. I am going to not pull that right now for fear that I'm gonna pull the wire. I'm gonna check that out. But anyway, so what I can do though, let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull out the motherboard here. And I don't think we're going to be able to see what processor is on here because, oh my goodness, they've actually, they have put goo, I bet that's the processor right there. They've put all that goo over the processor. Did I get all those screws? Looks like I did. All right, let me go ahead and get these screws out of here. There we go. Well, it is tight in there. They've done a, there's something holding it right there. What is that? Let me look in here and see. So looks like uh, they have, oh man, let me see. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's just try something. They have some kind of glue. <laughs> oh man, they did not want me doing this. So they have some kind of glue right over here on the side. I'm sure I can pry that off. Let me get these screws out of here before I lose them. Let 
And this that screw right there is very interesting. It just kind of sits there and tries to hold everything into place. So that's going to be, uh, let me go ahead and get that out of there before we lose it. Okay. Yep, it is Mislav. It is glue. There's some kind of glue holding it. However, now that I've, there we go. Yeah, right here. They've got some kind of tack right there. We've also got an issue with, there is a, oh gosh, check this out. That ribbon cable right there for the screen is very small and tight. If I take that out, this may never work again because of the way that they've done this. And I've had, if you watch some, oh, I know what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. Look at that. There's a screw right there. There we go. Okay. Now that should have, there we go, that released it. All right. So we got our little, I'll never get that back together. Sure I will, Stephen, you'll get that back together. We won't do that today. I'll do that after the live stream, but now we've got this out. Here we go. Be very careful. There's all the insides right there. So there's the, case. Oh, I just knocked out the uh, the buttons here. These buttons, they're, they do serve a purpose. This one resets and then these will allow you to select games uh, uh, without the controller if you want to do that too. That is an option. So that's kind of nice that they include that too. So here's our, here's our innards. You can tell it is not a lot. I'm going to be very careful with the screen. It looks like we can slow. Oh, there we go. There's the processor. It looks like it is a, let's see if we've seen it before. Yes, it's an ST. I've seen this uh, before, an ST361. Let me see if I can zoom in for you here so you can see that. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to read that or not. Let's, uh, da, 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 da. let's go ahead and focus. You can barely make that out. If I, there we go. Get the light just right. So there's the processor. And again, that is a common processor that's found in a lot of these little guys right there. So there you go. And looks like the screen is just a standard LCD, so be careful with that. Here is the, the speaker. Looks like it sits right here. I have to make sure to do that. And here's our little switch right here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to turn it. I think it's internal right there. And then here's our reset buttons here. Here's that switch I was talking about right here, the re uh, resistor with switch inside. So I don't know what we're, what's the goo for here? Any ideas what the goo is here? Is that protecting, because here's our uh, crystal, but what's under under the goo do we think? I can't peel the goo off, that's, that's, that's encased. We also have our uh, USB connector here, and we have our AV port there, so. All right, well, there you go. There's the thing all apart should, uh, let me see if I can get it back together here. The design is actually, it's not bad. I will say that. So trying to get everything back in there is gonna be a little tricky. Let's go ahead and put everything in like this. This has to sit in its little holder there. This has to go back in here. Hey, that went back in there a lot better than I thought it was going to. Let's see if everything looks good. Uh, that looks like that could be off a little bit. Let me move that over a little bit. There we go. Hey, that's not bad. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and put it together while I've got you guys online. Now I will probably, just to let you guys know, I'm probably gonna edit uh, this down, uh, this video. I think I'm gonna do that. I did not record it. Here, so I'll have to download it from YouTube and do the edit, which is okay. It's not really, really what I wanted to do. I should have pressed record over here, or maybe I'll just leave it. Um, memory chip. So Xander, you think that's memory chip, huh? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, let me go back here and see um, what have you all said. Jamie said that's maybe a 14, a 14 500 cell, 367 volts. Really? So this one right here, that's what you're thinking? This right here? So we think that's, I'll, I'll run a test on it. I've got a tester in there. It'll tell me what kind of voltage we're getting on it. So I'll check that out. Uh, I might even just run and grab that real quick. Uh, let's see, what else have we said? Uh, it's been blobbed. Yes, absolutely. Even the BBCB has ended up, even my, oh, where where is it ended? Um, 
That's not good. Oh, in the things drawer. Gotcha. I had to look up a little bit. So I'm, I'm checking. Uh, memory glue, memory chip is underneath, you think. Okay. Uh, that's the NES on a chip, isn't it? Yeah, they don't want anybody to see that, Matthew, for sure. Uh, they were probably worried about copyright, so they gooed that something. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, they don't want anybody to be able to see what that is, because if I tried to get that off, I would definitely um, destroy the thing. So let me go ahead and see if I can put this thing back together. And hopefully I get all the screws. I need to I need to magnetize this. So let me grab my magnetizer. Which, by the way, this is why I like my lavalier mic. I'm, I need to figure that out because I can walk around the studio and get things, but uh, or basement or whatever we're calling this thing. So uh, don't want anybody to get bootleg. Uh, don't want anyone bootlegging their bootlegging. Absolutely. Let me get my thing here. I should have had this out to begin with right here. All right, let me put this back up. So you get all these extra little things uh, with your... Uh, whatever this thing called is the life goo screwdriver. That's right. So let me go ahead and magnetize this thing. And then also make sure we don't lose these things. There we go. All right. So now we've got them kind of organized. So that was for this right here. Let me zoom out a little bit. So that was for this. And then these were to hold these in. So let's go ahead and so this is pretty nice too. Let me let's start with this one right here. Okay. Be careful not to get it on top of that wire there when I put it down. Now you can hand tighten. I think I mentioned that before. When you, when you don't have the power on it, just you hand tighten. It locks it into place, which is nice. Let's get this one in here. Now the big test will be, can I, will I be able to turn it back on and will it work? And you know what? I also want to test that battery. You all might have an interest in that. Uh, so I think I can go grab a battery tester really quickly. So it shouldn't take me but a second to grab that. Now this one was in there really strange because it was in at an angle. See that right there? Uh, and it kind of, so you could tell that they messed that one up. So let me put it in more at an angle here. There we go. See how that's in there? It's just kind of barely holding that in place. All right, so now that that is good, let me go ahead and wrap the wire. And looks like it goes back on this way right here. And let's clean up the screen just a little bit here. Yeah, not a good screen cloth thing. Uh, me too, Bluetooth. I wonder how the control the co controller says 2.4. Um, where's the box? Where's the box? It says 2.4. What are they saying on here? I saw it somewhere. Maybe it's on the web page. 2.4, is that megahertz? Uh, so I'm not sure if it's Bluetooth. Um, we can check the web page here in a minute and figure out. You know, I didn't think to look for the radio controller. I'll assume that that was built onto the board. Well, the, we saw a crystal. Well, the crystal could have been used for a couple of things. We did see the uh, gigahertz. There you go. Thank you, Matthew. Exactly. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so that, to me, would say some kind of, you know, aren't most of the mice and USB adapters, aren't they 2.4 gigahertz? as well i think so let's go ahead and get these guys back in here again i am not the most technical guy and i never can remember all these things these standards and everything i just love tearing this stuff apart and seeing what makes them tick uh so it's wi-fi no it is not wi-fi i don't think it's wi-fi i mean it could be a variant of wi-fi right so if I have not sold you on one of these uh, screwdrivers, huh, for sure you need one now. By the way, I think I have, I think I have a link to this in the video description if you are interested in one of these, by the way. And you can get, um, get them for a really, as a matter of fact, I think they're $10 off right now if you're interested in a cool one, but. 
All right. Okay, let me grab a battery tester because I want to test that. So hold on just one second. Now the problem is it was not charged uh, at all, but let's see if we can get any kind of reading off of this thing whatsoever. Oh, wrong way, gotta do it the right way. Well, it's good, but I'm not getting, yeah, so here's, here's what this tells me. Uh, this is for a one and a half uh, volt, so it's going well beyond that. So this thing is, this was just a quick tester to see where we are, so um, it looks like, and this says it goes from one to nine volts, but man, it is, I don't think there's a switch on here either. I can't test. So this is only testing one and a half. So it is definitely more than that. So I think you're right, Jamie. I think we're, we're talking something about three volts here. I could get another tester. I just don't have a volt ohm meter handy. And this just gives me a quick, let's, lets me know it's more than that. So we're good. All right. So thanks for that. Uh, it's off the scale. No doubt. It is big time off the scale. Uh, so let's go ahead and put this back in as well. Again, it looks like designed for two of them, uh, but it looks like decided to go with one. So I think at one point, maybe they were thinking, uh, yeah, look at this. It says in here, 3.8. There it is. You, uh, can you read that? Let's see if I can get that just right. It says 3.8 volts. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. Right there. There you go. 3.8 volts. So that's what we're looking at. Rechargeable lithium ion. Uh, I'm still, it's still surprising to me that the, uh, oops, wrong, wrong cover, the, uh, no, that is the right cover, that the uh, little screw for this isn't included either because they almost normally always put those on. Okay, we, um, we did find that these were the opposite. So this is this, 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 and this, believe it or not. But but how does that work? Because that can't work, right, guys? Because shouldn't there be a bar across the top here? Oh, Miss Love. They, <laughs> I know it's for the lovely accountant, but thank you so much for the super chat. I know you've hung out with me for a long time today. So thanks. And it's been, uh, you know, you've had to be patient with me today, but really appreciate the super chat. Thanks so much. Uh, and I will tell the lovely accountant. As a matter of fact, I am making her dinner tonight. So, and I need to go get some goodies for dinner so that will be she will love that two metal bars yes looks like they're missing that's what i'm thinking there should be two metal bars here uh, so there's no way that this can make a connection because those aren't here so let me check the box make sure they didn't fall out in the box or something here let's see nope that is just odd um well it's i mean it's not like not like this whole thing hasn't been odd right this has just been one of the oddest handhelds i have seen it's just very strange let me go let me go back down here all right let's go ahead and finish putting this thing back together and see if it works so now we know oh let's check um, you know what we can do let's see if these batteries are even decent right let me put this over here so it didn't roll around on us let's see if somebody bought those or why they're in here i have no earthly idea why they are in here oh these these batteries are good too so they're fully charged. So if nothing else, I got uh, four AA batteries fully charged, ready to go for the inclusion of this little guy. All right, let's get this put back on right here. Now this has to go on a specific way or it is not going to catch. That looks like that's it right there. Let's get our Final screw of the day. Uh, I was just about to say four AA batteries are about half the price of that unit. I'd say you may have like a bandit. Yeah, you know, you're, you're right. Because again, I got it for about 20 and I think maybe $21. So it is just very interesting. All right. And it works. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in. I'll get it charged in here. I'll tell you what, you put those batteries in there, it's heavy too, so it feels feels substantial. All right, so let me zoom in here. 
There we go. Looks like everything's working, guys. So let's do, so you can see this screen right here. Uh, let's do a, uh, let's do a shotting game. I just feel like we need to do a little bit. You can never have too much shotting in your day. So let's do a 1942 shotting game. Hey, Lone Tech, good to have you here. Uh, maybe they are just real substantial weights. That's that's all they are, too. So appreciate you being here, Lone Tech. Thanks for popping in. Uh, two metal bar. Oh, you, you were also the one who let me know we needed two metal bars, too. So you snuck in on me, sir. So that's great. All right, so let's play a little 1941. So I'm going to hit the start button. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Now, this is going to be hard to play. It's That, that screen is tiny, but I got to tell you, that screen is fun. Isn't that screen great, though? Uh, nothing's happening. I'm shooting. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> of course I died. All right, let's, let's try another one here. And I can change that volume. How about that? Is that just... That's just the greatest thing in the world. I just love this. Okay, I, I'm not sure why it got four and a half stars. I will say this. And boy, it seems slow too. I think uh, it could use a little processor hit because I think this processor is just barely keeping up. This game should be a lot faster and smoother for sure. But man, this is so much fun. Oh, I'm gonna die. All right, so the screen, everything's working. Contra 24 and 1. Yeah, that's not an odd title. Um, let me show you why that isn't. If we get, and that was under shotting games, right? Uh, Contra 24 and 1 is basically, uh, on a lot of these games, it is combining uh, all of the Contra games, all of the levels into this one big long thing. So you can jump to any one of these levels and play. So I can do this one right here. And I can jump right around to that particular version of that game. Oh, that's interesting. Look, as I press a button, you get a little light. Look at this. Showing that they're linked up. Check that out. So there you go. There's Contra right there. I think that's Contra. Is that me? Yes, that's me. Okay, so let me also show you that supposedly you can... Well, I'm not seeing it now. So I can reset, but supposedly... Oh, no, this is for linking. I thought it said you could use these controls, but this is for linking your controllers. So the other thing that you can do, it does come, let me turn that down. It does come with a single controller. You can, and I've got the uh, links in there, you can buy a second one and connect two so that you can play together. And I think up on a big screen, that could be fun. So, well, I think we have, I don't know that there's really anything else, folks, uh, that we can do with this thing, is there? I think we've, hi, I'm late. Max, you are late, we're, we're, we're about done. Uh, so I was just winding it up, Max, but it's good to have you here. Uh, thanks for joining in. And uh, we've had uh, uh, several of you just kind of pop in and pop out. I will leave the stream up live. I don't think I'm, now that I think about it, guys, I don't think I'm going to edit. I think I'm just going to leave it up the way it is and we'll let people take a look at this thing. I will go in and I will add some chapter markers so that people can follow along. I think I'll do a, uh, probably a follow up uh, blog post companion to go with it so I can share some of the things we learned about this today in writing. I'm sure there are a lot of people looking for information about this little guy. Uh, but again, I think we have decided that for the price I paid for it, it was a fun diversion on a Sunday afternoon. It obviously, because of the free batteries in the back, we got our money's uh, worth out of that. Again, some really strange quirks and peculiarities with this guy, but I think there's no mistaking though that this is quite possibly just a fun little gaming device. Not sure it's four and a half stars. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys think in the chat room, but uh, it is, you know, it's pretty cute. And I also have to wonder, are there, is there anything we can do to hack on this thing? Probably not because everything is, is pretty solid in there. Probably not much we are gonna do. I was thinking, would there be a way to repurpose that maybe uh, but given the way, uh, and maybe throw like a Raspberry Pi, but I'm not going to do any of that. I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Probably will sit back here. You'll see it. As a matter of fact, a lot of the stuff that I live stream and show ends up back here. So you'll probably see this back there. And it's just kind of cool, isn't it? So, uh, so thanks, Andrew. Thanks for joining. And uh, hey, guys, I think that's it for today. 
We've been on here for a while. We got distracted with some audio. I will get those audio things worked out for sure. Uh, don't forget those of you that are maybe not members of the channel or supporters, make sure that you do support. I did release a, um, a Rick roll on it. Yeah, in the background, that's great. I did uh, release a uh, buy me a coffee post that was only for my subscribers for a while. If you wanna see that, you can go to Twitter. And then I just sent out a new post uh, to my supporters uh, through buy me a coffee if you're interested in that and uh, I do have some things in the hopper I've got some more because uh, I know a lot of my supporters are mega 65 fans and want more 65 content I've been working on something all morning uh, and in the last couple of days actually I think I've got uh, probably close to where I'm getting ready to start editing some video I've got to do some voiceover stuff I might do that this afternoon or tomorrow I'm actually off tomorrow for my wife's birthday the lovely accountant's birthday is tomorrow uh, uh, um, Miss Love, so I will make sure and tell her that you know you sent her a little something for her birthday, so you'll be on her good graces. But uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. We we uh, did have a couple of days off where we were away from the house, took a little mini vacation, uh, and then came back. So I will be working tomorrow on the channel stuff and looking forward to doing a little bit of that later on in the afternoon after I spend some time with the lovely accountant for her birthday. But I think that's it. Again, check out that uh, live stream with Bill. That was a blast. I'm going to see about getting him possibly uh, here for a follow-up discussion. I think that could be fun. So uh, more, just got so much, so many ideas, a lot of stuff to do that I really want to get done and share with you. Uh, I've got a stream deck I got down here. I got to fix my audio. I got lots of stuff to do that'll just keep me busy forever. So for now, I think that is it. So thank you for joining on this again, this Sunday afternoon and Retro Combs out and I'll stay in the chat for just a few more minutes before we sign off. All right. See you guys. Thanks again for joining. That was a blast. I, well, I enjoyed it. I don't know if you guys did. Hey, here you go. Here's a little uh, screen for you as we fade out into chat. I think I'll put some music on too.
Estás escuchando Radio Parallax. Thank you. 